what are the best exercises you can do with dumbbells. Technically, it depends on precisely what you mean by best. Do you want an exercise that focuses on targeting an individual muscle as much as possible? Or do you want an exercise that gives you bang for your buck and stimulates growth across multiple muscle groups? I'm gonna go for a bit of both today because that's typically how we make up our training. I'll tell you what I think are the best dumbbell exercises you can do and more importantly, why I think that. First up, walking lunges. It was a difficult choice between these and Bulgarian split squats, but I think in an ideal world, the split squats are better with a barbell, which you can load onto your back from a rack the same way as you would with a squat. Lunges are still great with a barbell, but it can be awkward because you're either limited to a weight that you can clean and jerk, forcing you to inadvertently do CrossFit, or you have to load it on from a rack and then awkwardly turn around and walk over to where you can start your lunges. Most gyms also won't let you just dump the barbell at the end of your set, so you also have to finish with a behind the head press. Overall, it's just far more hassle than a dumbbell alternative. Pros. The movement pattern mimics a lot of everyday movements like walking, running, and climbing stairs. And it's also great for building good knee stabilization. So together that reduces your long-term injury risk. The momentum of stepping forward carrying weight means you almost immediately have to brace that front leg and lower into the step gradually. That gives the exercise a really strong eccentric component, which is important for hypertrophy. The really easily variable stride length and depth can be varied to place emphasis on different parts of the rep or for just a gradual range of motion progression. There are of course drawbacks. They can be taxing from a cardiovascular standpoint, so to benefit from them as a muscle building exercise, you do need a decent level of aerobic fitness to begin with. There is a silver lining though, because although your systemic fatigue will build up, the fact that you perform these alternately, left, right, left, right, means your local muscle fatigue will be reduced, which does have its benefits in terms of building muscle. Carrying dumbbells can fatigue the forearms and traps. I'd recommend just using lifting straps to keep this to an absolute minimum because if your grip becomes the limiting factor, you just won't get the most out of the exercise. They do require space, which isn't always easy to come by, especially in small or busy gyms. It's not something I could do easily in my home gym. Next up, the seal row. I don't think this exercise gets the credit it deserves, really. For free weight rows, your options include a range of bent over barbell exercises, but all of those require a lot of core bracing and lower back tension, which can sometimes limit the exercise. Or there's single arm dumbbell rows, where the posted arm forms your support. And I do like this exercise, but I still feel like there's a tendency to use your spinal erectors to partially rotate your torso. You can try and limit this, but I think once you start using heavier weights, it's difficult to avoid completely. The seal row circumvents all of the above. Pros. You have complete back support, so you can focus solely on the row and accumulate less systemic fatigue than other free weight rows. You can adjust the exercise emphasis by changing the incline, something most chest supported row machines won't allow for. And it's an easy technique. There aren't really many ways you can go wrong, which means even beginner lifters with very little experience should take to it pretty quickly. Cons. Depending on the bench and the dumbbells you're using, the range of motion can be a little bit limited or awkward. Now there is a barbell version of this exercise which is almost as good, but for two minor reasons. Firstly, the barbell forces you into an overhand pronated grip, where I think a semi-pronated or neutral is probably better. Second, it's rare to actually see a seal row bench and a cambered bar in commercial gyms these days. It's quite a niche piece of equipment, which is a shame. Next, some good old Romanian deadlifts. This is my favorite deadlift and actually the only one that I even do. So the barbell version is probably just as good to be honest and I think the only real benefit of using dumbbells over a barbell is the extra depth that you can reach but that's probably not necessary for most people. Even if you did, you could just do deficit deadlifts. Pros. Starting from an upright position, it means inexperienced lifters or those with poor mobility can perform partial reps easily because you start with the easiest portion of the rep and then you just go as deep as your mobility allows. With a conventional or sumo deadlift, you have to pull from the floor or use deadlift blocks which aren't always in mainstream gyms and even then you're always starting with the most difficult part of the rep and at your peak range of motion. So it's definitely an easier entry but it's also something that you can progress with easily as that mobility improves. Following from that they can really help with your hamstring flexibility over time. Although you're not holding it like a static stretch, you are actually working and creating a loaded tension in a 
stretch position and you're doing it with a neutral spine which creates a more hamstring focused stretch than when you just bend over and try and touch your toes for example. You don't drop the weight like you do with a typical deadlift, in fact quite the opposite. This is probably one of the slowest tempo lifts you do, which creates a very strong eccentric component to the lift. Cons. It is quite a skewed resistance curve, which means it's a fair bit harder at one end of the rep, the bottom in this case. Now this isn't as bad as it may seem because you're not just bending over forward and keeping your lower body static, which would massively extend the moment arm and actually just cause you to fall over. Because you hinge your hips back, you're keeping the weight closer to your center, which lessens the steepness of this resistance curve. Because of that eccentric phase and the generally slower tempo, you might be more prone to DOMS than with other deadlift variations. Next, the dumbbell overhead press. Technically, I'd call it an unsupported neutral to pronated grip dumbbell overhead press, but that's too long. I think for heavier, lower rep range vertical presses, the barbell OHP is great, and your dumbbells are maybe more suited to covering your lighter, higher rep press partly because you have to curl them first to get them up. So these are just a great general shoulder builder and I think far superior to this seated beside the head variation that you see people doing often. Pros. Firstly, without back support, you have to control your center of gravity and you can't just turn it into a very high incline press. Second, moving from the neutral to a pronated hand position forces you to flare your elbows back at the midpoint of the lift whilst you're still pressing. Actually, this is really similar to a standing barbell press because initially you have to press in front of you to avoid smacking yourself in the face. This brings in your lateral deltoid head far more than just continually pressing in the pronated hand position beside your head. Third, they're more forgiving for people lacking shoulder mobility. Everyone can do that, but not everyone can get as low with their elbows out in a frontal plane rather than the sagittal. Cons. They're definitely a bit more fatiguing having to stabilize your entire upper body, although I think that's pretty minimal and probably worth it. You do have to pretty much curl the weight, but you could always just as easily do these seated and use your knees to get them up. Penultimate exercise, the incline bicep curl. That does what it says on the tin, it works biceps, it just happens to work them really well. Pros. Since the shore head of the bicep originates on a part of the scapula called the coracoid process, starting the rep with the shoulder hyperextended, i.e. elbow behind shoulder, means that the bicep begins in a stretched position and ultimately works through a greater range of motion. It's not clear that stretch mediated hypertrophy occurs to the extent it does with some muscles, but this certainly isn't a bad thing. As or more importantly, this shoulder hyperextension weakens the tendency for shoulder flexion, that bringing forward of the elbows which you often see when people do freestanding curls so it forces you into a pretty immaculate form you can still cheat but it's a lot harder i don't really think there are any drawbacks to this exercise it's just sick right finally lying tricep extensions slash dumbbell skull crushes i'd say if i had to stick solely to one single tricep isolation exercise for the rest of my life this would be it so there are two main types of tricep isolation, the overhead extension and the push down. It's probably prudent to just include both, partly because it's so easy and convenient to just throw in some cable push downs, but it's generally assumed that the overhead extensions are superior to push downs when it comes to building muscle. Just waiting for some geese to fuck off, right? One reason could be that stretch mediated hypertrophy, similar to the previous bicep exercise we looked at. That's because the long head of the triceps originates on something I'm not gonna try and pronounce. It's kind of deep in there. So when the elbow is raised, tension increases. So the triceps are then working whilst in a more stretched position. Another quite interesting possibility is the idea that simply raising the arm reduces blood flow to that area, which means that you won't clear lactic acid as quickly and your muscles endure more of what's called metabolic stress, which is one of the ways that muscles grow. Regardless of precisely why, it certainly seems that it is true that overhead extensions are superior. In a recent study, participants who performed overhead extensions achieved 1.4 times the growth that the group doing push downs did, which is pretty significant, actually huge. So why do I choose this overhead extension specifically? Well, I think the upright overhead extension can be a bit awkward to set up. And I also end up smashing myself in the back of the head with a dumbbell, which is definitely less than ideal. Just not for hypertrophy, just for general life. Pros. So these are both safer than an easy bar skull crusher and require less grip strength and forearm involvement because it's easier to hold a dumbbell like this than a bar like this. 
The main thing, you can adjust the range of motion, difficulty and resistance curve simply by moving your elbows back and forth. So remember, the rep will always be hardest when the dumbbell is moving perpendicular to the floor, so most against gravity. But you can decide whether that happens at the start, middle or end of the rep by just adjusting your elbow position. Cons, none, again, just a sick exercise. All right, so that is my top six dumbbell exercises. I know I've not covered every muscle group in there, so for things like chest or lats or obviously calves, I just think there are probably better ways to train those with different equipment. It's not really worth mentioning much in terms of dumbbell exercises. I, of course, am interested in your opinions, so if you think there's something that should have made it onto the list but I've left out, then please tell me what it is. And again, more importantly, why I would like to hear slash read it. All right, that's me. Sayonara, ciao ciao, arrivederci. In a bit, later la. Jordi Lenny is my hero.